Well, welcome everybody uh, to our post-service commons. Like Greg just said, Scott Mariner is going to be joining me here in just a moment. He's making his way back from the stage. I'm sure talking to people and hearing things about his message, that happens. Uh, we're going to be talking all about Christmas Eve today. And of course, the big announcement related to Christmas Eve is that our Christmas Eve services are going to be uh, online focused and online only this uh, this Christmas Eve. So um, we're we're building the whole thing. The kind of the way that I've been thinking about it is uh, rather than asking you to join us for Christmas Eve uh, this this year, we are uh, wanting to join you for Christmas Eve. Oh, welcome, Scott. Hey, Come on in, man. So uh, we are wanting to join you wherever you are. So uh, Scott, I was just giving them the briefest, briefest of all rundowns on Christmas Eve. The big announcement, of course, right. being. Do you want me to put these cool headphones on? Or? You can. You can hear the voice better. It kind of you know helps us pay attention to each other. Or you can know. leave them off. It's, I'll leave them off. It's fine. You're just talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, online Christmas Eve yes. with in-person watch parties. That's the that's the combo for this year. So it is. Thank you for encouraging me. I'll be saying for well, thank you very. Thank you. Uh, he just he's gonna. So since you outed me, I have surgery uh, Tuesday uh, rotator cuff. So thank you for those prayers, my friend. We'll see you next. Well, actually, I may not be here next Sunday, but pray that I will be. All right, we're gonna let somebody else preach because me preaching on pain meds might not be the the best way to have the no, Holy Spirit. That's work. not edifying no. to the body. No. Uh, so yes, Christmas Eve online. I'm pretty excited actually, and it's taken me a while to get excited because mostly I found myself early on, uh, mostly just thinking about all the loss in not getting 4,000 people together to celebrate Jesus on Christmas Eve like we typically get the privilege of doing. It's one of my favorite experiences as a, a member of this church family is Christmas Eve at Change Point. So it was tough to to realize that just isn't going to be safe or doable this year. But like Michael shared in the service today, uh, we're really getting excited that God's got plans to redeem Christmas Eve 2020 in surprising and innovative ways. So I'm, I'm kind of having deja vu from Easter 2020, yeah. right? Yep. It has that same sort of feel. I just remember having this thing hit and then thinking Easter's only like four, four weeks away. You know, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And uh, so we did the online services. And like Michael said, that was the best attended Change Point Easter service of all yeah. time. More people than the Alaska Airlines Center. So yeah. you just never know what the Lord's going to do. You never know what he's going to do. You know, we, we got to remember to measure success the right way. Success is not the number of people at any particular event that we would put on. Success is about us doing everything we can to honor and point people to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And I believe God gave us the ability uh, to do that uh, remarkably well at Easter 2020. And I believe he's going to do that through our Christmas Eve services online this year as well. So do I. There's so just an uh, interesting opportunity that I'm kind of getting excited about. My family is, my media family is just scattered all over the world. Um, I've got a sister in Georgia. I've got a brother in Denver. I've got a sister in Australia. Mm -hmm. My parents live in Arizona. I mean, we're just all you over the place. You, you are. You, I hadn't thought about it, but yeah, you're right. You're we're, everywhere. We are the four corners of the earth. Yeah. And so this uh, being an online event, I'm kind of hoping that we can, that this can be a way for us to be together or experience something together, even though we're far away. I've been hearing people say that that's very possible. In fact, I'm hoping over the next couple of weeks, we can perhaps put some, uh, and I guess I'm talking to the right guy about this, put some tips on our website for how to have you know, virtual watch parties. You know, I know at my, uh, in my life group, uh, we've been kind of a hybrid of online and in person here this fall. Uh, and there are times when people are zooming in that I've been able to, to show a video, do the screen share thing, and we all watch it together. And then it video ends, and then we chat about it. And I can imagine that, for example, being something that your whole family could be together virtually, watch the Christmas Eve service, and then even talk about it without having to jump on and off different platforms. I was thinking about doing this. I was going to do two screens. I was going to put the service up on my living room TV and then have basically the Zoom chat with everybody uh, you know, yeah. off on a laptop or yeah. something. So we can talk. And, and Facebook has these things called watch parties that I don't even know what those are about, but I bet you do, and you can help us all figure that yeah, out. Yeah, <laughs> very, very similar thing, right? So it's it's watching a video together, and then they put a text chat in there so you can be going back and forth and making comments and things. And 
Uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to look different than it has. But you know that old expression, uh, when when the Lord closes a door, he opens a window, right? You know, uh, my grandpa always used to say that. That has been so true for me in 2020, for all of us, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, have you, you've seen that same oh, absolutely. thing. absolutely. The Lord, it seems that he's closed many yep. doors and opened tons you know, of new You know, the stuff. truth is, maybe we should use this as a byline, uh, it's never been easier to invite somebody to join you for Christmas Eve at Change Point. Because you're right, doesn't matter where in the world they are, even the time zones work, right? I'm thinking about some of my college friends who I certainly have never been able to invite to Christmas Eve. They live on the East Coast, but the one o'clock service would be what, five o'clock their time? It's pretty good for a Christmas would Eve be, service. Uh, would be seven o'clock their time, yeah. So I could invite college roommates to join me for Christmas Eve at Change Point, and uh, even the time zones to the East Coast would work pretty well. I don't know about Australia, but... It'll be Christmas Day. Okay. Our Christmas yeah. Eve is their Christmas Day. It's always tomorrow there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, as far as inviting friends goes, uh, we are putting together a website, changepointalaska.com slash Christmas. Uh, that is not available this Sunday, but it will be available next Sunday, and that's going to have invite links for all the different platforms, and it's just copy, paste, and send. So uh, regardless of where you enjoy watching the online services or how you uh, uh, intend to do so on Christmas Eve, we will have invite links available on that webpage. Um, So, Scott, let's talk about the in-person watch parties, Mm -hmm. because that's something we didn't have a lot of time for on stage. What's going on with that? Yeah, well, we recognize that there are people that don't have... uh, people that they could really watch it with, uh, or maybe just coming to the Raspberry Campus. You know, you've got little kids, and it's just a part of the tradition that you want to preserve for your family and for your children. Uh, and it just the best thing for you is to come to the Raspberry Campus. Uh, we're calling it a watch party because we won't have the live, you know, the live musicians and things. But I'm going to be here in person, and many of us pastors will be here. Um, so hopefully we won't end up having to uh, hit our maximums of our so- social distancing requirements. And, uh, but, uh, but we're inviting people to come. And uh, if they don't have a better watch party to attend uh, with others, then come on down to the Raspberry Campus. We'll have watch parties here for whoever shows up. And we'll keep everybody safe. And, and uh, yeah, we're excited about it. And we're going to do that at the same four times, mm-hmm. so 1, 3, 5, 7 p.m. Those are, if you've been to Change Point for any period of time, you're familiar with those as Christmas Eve service times, and we're doing it again this year, mostly online, but with in-person watch parties. Yeah. So uh, let's shift gears a little bit, because we had another very exciting announcement yeah, today. Yeah, we did. Very exciting announcement, the recipients of this year's Uncommon Gift. So for anybody who's just joining us, tell everybody what Uncommon Gift is. So I don't remember how long ago... <laughs> We came up with this idea. It's been over well over a decade. 2008. Was oh, you the actually first, know. Uh, 2008. First uncommon yeah. gift. So, uh, so since 2008, we've had a tradition at Change Point of taking a special offering at the end of the year for the sole purpose of blessing a ministry, usually one that's a partner of ours, that meets practical needs in the name of Jesus in our, uh, generally in our city or sometimes in our state. Um, past recipients, for example, Alaska Christian College, you know, training up young Alaska Native uh, women and men to to know Jesus and then to go share Jesus back in the villages after they get their education, and many other wonderful ministries. Uh, so that's the tradition, and and every year I'm astonished at the heart of generosity that our church family has, uh, with very little you know ramp up, very little communication, just a few weeks. Our church has just consistently, year after year, uh, blessed ministries. I remember the year that uh, we blessed the um, downtown Soup Kitchen Hope Center uh, with literally funds that kept them going through Mm -hmm. a season when they were in danger of having to shut their doors. Uh, Executive director was just could not believe the single largest gift in history. Alaska Christian College was the single largest gift they'd ever had from a church. And so... Yeah, just neat. It's a, it's a neat time every year to just let God use us in a fresh way to make a difference in the lives of people who really need help. So I did the math this past week. Um, take a guess at how much, since 2008, how much money do you think the Change Point family has given away in uncommon gift offerings? Was that 12, 11 years? 
Wow, that number started getting over a million dollars. It's three point two million dollars. No way! <laughs> it's three, Are, seriously, three point two million dollars over the last twelve years. That's awesome. So that has been given away. So uh, this year's uncommon gift recipients, we announced them today. We're doing something new this year. Yeah, we've never had two. We've never had two. Yep. So uh, why do we have two <laughs> and who are they? <laughs> well, I think a couple of different reasons why we have two. One is because the need, you know, just seems extra in front of us this year. Um, there's a lot of need out there, practical needs. People in the margins have really been impacted by by the, by the various aspects of COVID. Um, the theme we really felt the Lord take us to was the theme of homelessness. You know, that is a population that's always stressed, always on the margins, but COVID has really devastated that community. It's grown that community first and foremost, so it's a lot bigger. Um, and we see that even as we drive around town. Um, and, and then not only is it bigger, it's just more devastated. Um, you know, the, we've, the city's been taking steps where Sullivan Arena has been turned over to, to the homeless shelter and things. But in a lot of ways, those attempts seem to have, they certainly have only been putting Band-Aids on the problem. So the need is big. Uh, homelessness is our focus. And then we really found ourselves feeling strongly that both Covenant House and uh, New Hope Compassion Ministries um, needed uh, to be recipients this year. Um, neither of them, it also felt like the size of the uncommon gift could be split between two and really make a big difference this year. It didn't need to be concentrated in one, uh, which in many times in the years past, the vision that we had, the need that the organization had kind of required it to be focused and concentrated. We didn't feel that this year. So those are some of the reasons. Ultimately, it's a matter of prayer or discussion and got excited about it. So Probably next year we'll go back to just having one. I don't know, uh, but I can get excited about it too. You know, you you brought up there just uh, you use the the term kind of a band aid. You know, there's there is definitely uh, it's it's essential to meet practical and immediate needs. But one of my favorite things about both Covenant House and New Hope is how they are not just putting a band aid oh, on absolutely. it. They're really going for right. it. So talk to us a little about well, what they do. Well, our recipients every year we make certain the recipients are never just a social service. Right, social services are of, of real value, uh, but but our does our intent is to is to bless and fund and enable ministries who are providing a social service as a means to point people to Jesus. There's a very big difference. Um, so both the New Hope and Compassion and um, Covenant House are working to point people to Jesus. Some of you may not know that we have a change point pastor, Dave Bacher, who is the pastor at the Covenant House. Uh, we split his salary with uh, with Covenant House, and and so a change point pastor is at Covenant House every day, interacting with the homeless teens there, and Dave is pointing them to Jesus. And it's challenging work. Uh, that's a rough mission field, let me tell you what, but. But they have soft hearts when you can finally get through to them. And Dave Bacher is earning the right um, to uh, to speak into the lives of these teens and point them to Jesus. Well, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that Dave Bacher is going to be our guest in the Commons next week. Well, there you go. Uh, or he and several others are going to be joining me here in the Commons next week. So uh, definitely we're going to hear all about yeah what, what he's been doing and... and uh, What's going on with the kids down there? Well, I would, I'd be remiss if I didn't also take this opportunity, Tony, because I don't get in here all that often, uh, to just tell you how thankful we are that God's put you on the team with the gifts that you have, with technology, with communications. Uh, we've, you know, you added value before COVID, but 2020 uh, has featured the way that God can use your, your kind of uh, techie talents to expand his kingdom. So thank you, Tony. Thank you, your sir. Your gift to me and your gift to our team and our old church family. Well, thank you. Um, so let's talk a little about New Hope. Covenant House is kind of a long-established name in Alaska. Uh, New Hope has a long history in Alaska, but they haven't been kind of as publicly in front of the Change Point family. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk a little about New Hope and what they do and why we love them. Yeah, uh, New Hope's been a, a ministry partner of ours for several years, but you're right. We haven't featured them as much as we have some of the other partners. Um, and uh, what's not to love about New Hope? You know, I, I, I t personally, I'm an entrepreneur. That's kind of my wiring. And I just love how entrepreneurial 
They are down there. <laughs> That's such a good word. Oh my goodness! You just go down there, and they they redeem every space, every everything, just to the max. I'm like, okay, let's. They need food. Let's feed them. They need a church. Let's have one. No, let's have four. Uh, on and on. They just they're constantly taking every resource they have and just in an amazingly entrepreneurial way, leveraging it to bless and meet the needs of really at-risk uh, people in our community and doing it all very strongly and boldly in the name of Jesus. So, yeah. Yeah, if you if you haven't been down there to the corner of 12th and E to see these guys in action, I mean, you walk in, it's an old church building from, I don't know, the 50s. Yeah, it's, it's an, old, it's an yeah. older building right there across from Central Middle School. And you walk in, and like Scott's saying, every square inch is a hive of frenetic ministry activity. Yep. There's like nine different organizations working at the same time. Yep. It's very, very cool. Um, one of the other things I love about them, too, is uh, when we talk about homelessness in Anchorage, we have kind of the homeless that we think of, the people that you see on the street, you yep. know, asking for money. And then there's, uh, that's actually a, a fairly small chunk of the homelessness in our city and state. A lot of it is families, working people, people experiencing temporary seasons of homelessness, and New Hope really attacks both of those yeah, issues do. in different and distinct ways. Mm -hmm. So uh, love that about them. Absolutely. You know, I'll, I'll tease a little, since people are, if you're still on the commons, here's something we'll tease you with. It's not a done deal yet, but we are, for the first time ever, seriously feeling the Lord birthing a uh, potentially, anyway, a uh, food ministry, a food pantry right here at Change Point. Partnership with uh, Food Bank of Alaska, um, New Hope Compassion <laughs> Ministries. So you uh, might be hearing a lot about that in the months ahead. You know, that has been just another COVID 2020 opportunity from the Lord has been this facility. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we emptied out the facility because normally we have a lot of in-person crowded events here, and we stopped doing most of those. Uh, and the Lord has just given us opportunity after opportunity sure to has. leverage this building from the APD training to COVID testing to the study hall over and over and over. Yeah. So, yeah, just... Why wouldn't we... Well, homelessness is a big issue. Food is a big need. Um, there been Even national news has been having articles nationwide of, uh, of hunger kind of reaching new epidemic um, uh, levels in our, in our nation, especially with kids. So to have a food pantry here, leverage our facility that way, could make a lot of sense. Could make sense. So uh, uncommon gift details for everybody. Uh, we normally, we take the uncommon gift uh, kind of on one Sunday, or we've done it on Christmas Eve. Last year we did it on Christmas Eve. Um, and it's a one-time event and sort of done. Uh, this year, because people are in and out and all around, we have opened the uncommon gift today. So uh, uncommon gift is available in the Change Point app. If you scroll down on the This Sunday tab, you'll see a big uncommon gift thing there. Uh, it's also online, changepointalaska.com slash uncommon gift. And uh, you can give to the uncommon gift there from now until December 31st. So yep. piece of cake. Uh, well, Scott, you don't get to be here in the commons all that often. Is there anything else related to Christmas Eve uncommon gift that you want the Change Point family to hear in this more you know relaxed context? I don't Nothing comes to mind other than, you know, the old sayings of let's not forget the reason for the season. As I was preparing today's message, I just found myself realizing I'm a pastor and I forget the reason for the season sometimes. Um, crazy, but I do. So let's remember it's and if you're mourning uh, things that you can't do that you normally do. I mean, on Mariner family, we couldn't have a family Thanksgiving what a heartbreak that was. My parents uh, needed to uh, keep hunkering down, and so we didn't have Mariner family Thanksgiving for the first time ever. Um, that was a real loss. We're not going to have Mariner family Christmas because we pack usually 30 people in my parents' 1974 living room. Ain't going to happen this year. That's a real loss. But what's not lost is the, the fact that the Holy Spirit uh, has blessed the Mariner family uh, with health and, uh, and we love each other. And so we're going to focus on the things that really matter this Christmas and try not to get too bummed about the loss of some things that we really enjoy. So yeah, those are some thoughts. That's good advice for me. <laughs> I need to go have a conversation with my inner Herod. I think uh, that's... Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> well, that's all the time we have today. Uh, God bless you, Change Point. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, have a great week, and uh, we'll see you next Sunday.